time now to ask the big questions. How did we get here? Why do we exist? Are we alone? Well, <laughs> Ruth and I can't help you there, but our next guest can. It's Professor Brian Cox, and fingers crossed he's inviting you along to find the answers in a brand new tour. Professor, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, Good. And when, are, when are you expecting to be on the road, back on the road again? Well, we're, we're hoping that it will be October. We, we'd planned this about two years ago. A very different world, a very different world. And what about the, the whole thing of transportation? Because what you do through your lectures, um, through, through your teaching of people, but also the visual effects, you do transport people. I hope so. I mean, I, I, I want... Um, to ask questions, you said that these the biggest questions we can ask are how did the universe begin? Why is there anything at all? <laughs> Why do we exist? How do we exist? And also what the fundamental nature of reality is. Right? I, I think we've all asked these questions at some level and using some language. And um, I, I think the remarkable thing is we're beginning to get some answers. We don't have all the answers. Um, the, the answer to some of those questions, like why is there a universe at all, is we don't know. But um, one of the things I'll do in the show, which is, it's just one of the most fascinating things I've found over the last two or three years, is I'll, I'll look at black holes. And black holes are the most, you know, you think, what have they got to do with the universe and nature, these completely collapsed stars, these weird things that we hear about in science fiction. But I'll, I'll just say the answer. I'll say what we're beginning to suspect. That's an image of one, by the way, in a galaxy 50 million light years away. That thing is six billion times the mass of our sun. Imagine that, a black hole six billion times the mass of our sun. And by studying those and answering some questions that Stephen Hawking asked, actually, over 50 years ago, we've come to the conclusion, and I'll just say it out loud and I'll stop, that we might be holograms, that we might be holograms. Through dreaming and waking up, lived thousands of different lifetimes. Fundamental metaphors about reality, waking up from a dream. We have this cognitive experience of shifting between realities. There's another world behind this world. Okay, so this is gonna set the tenor for everything. Living in a computer programmed reality. Simulation theory is the idea that this is all fake. The matrix was real. We are being inhabited by some sort of player. I would start giving myself tests. I'm thinking of someone and I turn the corner and there they are. The only clue we have is when some alteration in our reality occurs. We are living in a simulation. Okay, so what do I do with that? I don't know, enjoy it. Simulation theory is a blending of religion and science. This is a way to deal with the complexity of human existence. What's the point of laws? What's the point of all this? This is what it feels like to be alive right now. The inability to separate real world from digital reality. A world without rules, controls. People are scarcely real to me. Because it's a game. There's a lot of very dark forces on the horizon. There are things that are trying to manipulate me. This world is capable of falling apart. Somebody's got to be putting their hand on the scale. The creator of the game. 